Hello again. Okay, we'll continue our discussion of uh, product configuration, routings, and bills of material by looking at a bill of material. This time, instead of opening the item master, we'll actually navigate to products bill of materials. Notice also that we can go to product routing and get a list of items that have routings. Uh, in this case, we're looking at bills of material, so we'll go to list. We could have used the uh, toolbar button at the top if, uh, if we chose to. And then what we're going to do is open up the item we've been working with, which is Y truck one. And let's talk about the header information. So uh, in a later video, we'll look at revisions. Uh, but if we've turned revision control on, then we have the option of actually defining a revision for this item. Uh, just as with the routing, we can also record a date and a document number, the document number being just freeform information and can be left blank. Uh, batch size is informational except when you're using uh, tooling. Uh, there's an item type called tooling and the idea there is that rather than having a quantity per, it would actually have a fixed quantity. The idea being that if we needed to machine something, we might uh, pull a machine tool out of stock, use it to make a product. Uh, so we might make a thousand units of something. And when we're done, put the machine tool back into uh, stock. So the question is, what batch size can that machine tool accommodate? OK, at the bottom, we also have details, which summarize the number of items in the um, uh, in this bill of material and how many of those are pick list items. Uh, you re may remember, let's see if I can get to this very quickly. You may remember that when we define an item, there was this checkbox called pick list. And that indicates whether or not the item should show up on a work order pick list. Well, it turns out that all of these items have been flagged as pick list items. There may be items that you don't care about showing up on a, a pick list. For example, a dunnage material like peanuts or those kinds of things that go in for packaging. We may want to put them on the bill of material, but not necessarily waste space on the, uh, the pick list with that kind of thing. We're also showing the total quantity per. So that's this column and also the total cost at standard and the total cost of all of these items um, at actual cost. Uh, in addition, we're showing the max desired cost. If I open up the little Y truck one item, uh, the item master, here is our max desired cost. So we're well within that tolerance at this point. Uh, in addition, we can optionally check the checkbox total quantity per should equal. And we can actually put a figure in here. Now I'm going to put just an arbitrary figure in and go to save. And what it says is that the total quantity per um, doesn't match the value that I entered. Uh, so this can be useful in some specialized applications where we may be doing uh, mixing some chemicals that uh, or other combination of items that should equal a certain weight, for example. Uh, so we can double check our work by just uh, putting a value in here. Maybe it's 20 kilograms and uh, it'll save that information. And if we go in and modify the bill of material later on, uh, if we're not in compliance with that total quantity per, we'll get an error message. So we can always modify that to equal what the new quantity per is, but at least it's a double check. It draws our attention to the idea that maybe the total quantity per um, is important and should equal a certain uh, preset value. Okay, that's good for this header information. Um, other than I did want to point out the idea of uh, the document tab. Uh, so for example, if I click attach here, uh, one of the choices I would have is to attach to a file. And uh, if I do that, I can actually save that file uh, into the database. Uh, I can select from a list of uh, files that I have locally on my computer here, say a JPEG or a PDF or a PNG file or a Word doc or an Excel spreadsheet, whatever it is. And when I save that, it'll be a permanent record um, with this bill of materials that I can refer back to later on. Okay, that's good 
for now, we'll come back and look at the bill of material line uh, entries here in, uh, in, in the next video.